So last time we um, we made this little program that executed a tiny little bit of Lua script. We got a global from Lua. We pulled this global out of Lua. We turned it into a number, and we printed it. And I think at this point it would be quite easy to just move on to the next bit and go, okay, cool, we know what we're doing now. But um, I think there's a little bit going on here that if you've not used Lua before, is a little bit weird. Um, for one thing, we're using the stack to communicate with Lua, and we've got these few Lua types that we may have not seen before. And there's only a few Lua types, so it's worth going through those so you know what they are. Uh, and then we'll look at how the Lua stack works. I think once you know the Lua stack and you know what the types are, um, it starts getting a lot easier to understand how this API works. And the reason it communicates through a stack is because it's simple. It's, it can seem a bit weird at first because it's not the usual way you call functions. Usually, you know, you call a function, you pass some parameters, and you get you get something back. But Lua doesn't do it like that. Um, and again, it's a strength and a weakness. So I think it's a strength because um, it makes the API much simpler. So the first thing is the types. We used number before, uh, but we just didn't really know what that was. So Lua's only got a few types, and they are nil. Uh, it's only got eight types and nine if you count nil. So that's Lua's like null type. You might get a value back that's not a value. So so that's nil. Uh, it's got boolean, so the true false thing. Um, has something called light user data, which uh, when I first started seeing Lua code, I was like, what the hell is this light user data that keeps getting bandied around? And it's really quite simple. Light user data is just a pointer, a C pointer. So it's a pointer to some memory somewhere in native code, um, which may sound uh, like if you're doing the scripting, it's it's no use to you because you've not, you probably don't uh, work with native stuff. But um, it does seem quite useless because Lua itself can't really work with the pointers. But there are times when you need to just pass a pointer to some piece of memory to Lua, and you can do that in a light. Uh, light user data. Like for instance, I've used it to pass uh, an instance of a debugger to Lua, so Lua can get an in the one instance of the debugger that it needs. So it's just a C pointer. There's nothing magical about it. Uh, number. Lua only has one number type that represents all kinds of numbers: uh, fixed point, floating point, everything. Um, so I think it's represented as a 64-bit number. So um, but Lua will do some magic to convert, you know floating point to um, standard integers and stuff like that. Um, string, so uh, just this kind of a standard string, except strings are garbage collected by Lua, so when we start doing like Lua to string, you'll need to be aware that um, you'll get a pointer back to a string, but you can't just keep hold of that pointer and start using it later on because Lua can garbage collect it. So you need to be aware of that when you're using strings in the C API is that you, if you get a string out of Lua and you're planning on using it later, you're going to have to copy it. Uh, it's table. Table is Lua's only complex data type, which is pretty cool that a language can get away with one data type, one complex data type. So it's the it's the kind of thing like like this. So so in script it'll look like that. So Lua basically does everything with tables and uh, I think it's quite cool how much it gets away with um, you know being able to use them as arrays and use them as associative arrays and use them as like C classes and stuff like that um, so it's pretty cool how much stuff you get away with with just that table and again the simplicity of the language it's that's the reason is every time you need a complex data type it's always a table and it's always the API that you already know and there's not loads of new code to to look at uh, next one is function function is a type in Lua because basically all functions are lambdas in if you know what a C++ lambda is all functions are lambdas in Lua so any function can be passed as uh, as a variable to a, another method or can be put inside a table so um, that's pretty cool uh, there is user data this is um, not quite like user data user data allows you to create your own types in Lua so that's one going to be one of the things that you're going to use more often than the light user data is that you might have say a C++ class that you want to use in Lua you can actually create one of those and and the user data will have it garbage collected by Lua so it'll be managed by Lua be garbage collected by Lua and you can also um, push 
uh, Lua values onto it as a like a user in something called a user table. So you can put a table on it, so you can actually add extra values to that. So that's something that's really useful because that's one of the extensibility parts of the language that allows you to um, basically add your own stuff. Like if Lua doesn't do what you want it to do, or if you've got your own type in your language, like your own game or something, you've got a call get joysticks on it or something, then user data is the your friend in this case. And the last one is thread, which is also a type. Um, I, I think that's actually, I've not really used thread in Lua, but I think that's actually the, like the coroutines in Lua. I've not really used coroutines in Lua. So that's not something I've really ever used, but these other ones definitely use these all the time, especially table gets everywhere and function and user data. So all incredibly useful. So Lua doesn't have many types. It's a strength and a weakness. I think it's a strength. Um, so it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're learning it. So we've got the types there. We saw that type. The other thing we had is this concept of the stack and how we communicate with Lua with the stack. So let's just make another Lua state there. and Let's just close it. Let's be nice and clean up after ourselves. So all the communication with Lua is done on the stack. This this little program I've written here, this, this just opens a Lua state closes it doesn't do anything what we can do is even without executing any code we can start pushing stuff onto this Lua stack and uh, and kind of get an idea of what's going on and we can do that with push let's just push numbers on because we, we've used numbers before so what we're going to do is we're going to push uh, we're going to push 42 onto the stack here um, so that literally takes the number 42, pushes it onto Lua stack at the top as as a Lua number. We can just push another one on. We can push the number 52 on. And we can push another one on, 62. So we've basically taken our state, we've pushed three numbers onto this Lua stack that we're talking about. Um, and then what does the Lua stack look like at this point? So we've got the number 42, and that's at position one on the stack. We've got number 52, it's position 2 on the stack. And we've got number 62, position 3 on the stack. So um, basically that's what we've got. And we can actually, we can index these values anywhere in the stack. We can actually get them back using the Lua 2 number, remember. So if I want to get, if I want to get 52 back, let's just see, let's copy it from up here. What have we got? Let's get our let's get our value back off the stack. So we're going to get the value at position two. So we should get Lewis saying x is 52 if we run this. Let's just see if that's what we get. So Lewis says x is 52, and there it was. So that was position two on the stack. Position three should be 62. It says x is 62. There you go, it's all working. So that's pretty cool. So we can push values, we can pop them off the stack as well, but you might not want to... The, the other thing you'll see is you'll see things being indexed with negative numbers, and that's the other way of indexing the stack. So if you, it might be more convenient, depending on what you're doing, to index from the bottom of the stack. Like I'm calling this the bottom. I don't, I, I'm not sure whether it's the top or the bottom, but I'm going to say we index them with negative numbers like this. So there's the same stuff on the stack. We've got position 1, 2, 3, 42, 52, 60, but we can also, we can index the last thing we pushed onto the stack with a negative number like that. So I can do Lua to a number, negative 1, and I can say, oh, let's just change the name of this variable. So let's go... The last thing I pushed was, and uh, it should be 62, because I've, I've said minus 1, minus 1, which is the last thing I pushed on the stack. Let's just have a look at that. Last thing I pushed was 62. And then the second last thing I pushed should be at minus 2. There we go. 52. So minus two was 52. So you'll, you'll probably see these all over the place when you're looking at these 
indices to stacks or whatever so you'll see these sometimes you'll see something like three and then sometimes you'll see minus two or, or in this case three and minus one are, are, are actually are actually the same thing so so depending on what you're doing you might like it might be much easier for you to like say minus one or much more easier to reason about than it is to say well how many things have I pushed on what's the last thing on the stack so that's basically that's basically how the, that's basically how the stack works it's it, it's a stack but you can't you, you can access more than just the top and the bottom you can access stuff in the middle as well and you can also you can uh, remove stuff just at any index so um, let's say I want to remove 52 I could do lure remove 2 or in this case I could also do negative 2 depending on what it is so uh, this should remove 52 from the stack um, and then what I should be left with is after that is the 52 is gone and I'm left with 62 42 now this is now indexed at minus 2 or alternatively I could use that as 1 and 2 so now the last thing I pushed on the stack should still be 62 should be 62 let's have a look oh, I've copied the variable haven't I it's now a triple X how cool is that so last thing I pushed was 62 the last thing I pushed was still 62 so nothing's changed there and let's just see the first thing I pushed well let's just see the second thing I pushed should be 62 uh, let's just look at what actually let's just look at what's at 1 on the stack and let's look at what's at 2 on the stack because that's what's changed from before hasn't it like we should have 62 at the stack but before it would have been 52 so position 2 is so I'm expecting position 2 is 62 I can also access that as negative 1 position 2 is 62 so you can see the the Lewis stack is basically it's kind of like it's, it's it's what you expect it is a stack but keep in mind you can push and pop from this stack and you can also just pop stuff out the middle of the stack as well um, and you can access it in two different ways. You can access it as, as one, two, three there, or negative one, negative two, negative three. But essentially, it's the same thing. It's the same stack you're accessing it. You're just doing it in a different way. So um, next video, we'll probably, now we know how to do that, we'll probably look at um, maybe either calling a function or getting some more strings or some more globals out of it, or, or pushing globals back to, uh, pushing values back to C and getting them to uh, getting it to read them so I hope that makes some kind of sense but if you understand this Lewis stack then and you understand what these types are uh, it's going to get a lot easier for you <laughs>